So when I was just a young punk out of college, I got started working on a satellite radio program, a development satellite radio program. I was the software engineer, and I quickly found myself in charge with the development of the GUI screens, you know, the user interface. And what I did was I uh, compiled a, a collection of, of different operators for said radio system or proposed radio system, both current and retired. Got them all together in a room and we walked through the design of the radio that is the legacy radio that the radio I was working on was going to replace it. Turns out that these operators were all pilots or, well not really pilots, but part of the flight crew for the B-52 weapon platform and also the B2. I call this my first story time. The story today is about the toilet seats, the $642 toilet seats that some of you often bring up when discussing government contracts. I wanna talk a uh, third party source, as a third party source, uh, to someone, a part of the flight right, crew honey. on a B-52 that explained it to me. So it's... Friend Carlin's birthday. We are going to go find a gift for friend Carlin. Where are we going? Oh, she watches your vlog. Oh God, that's right. Can't show Carlin the gift. <laughs> Jesus. So here I am. It's uh, fresh out of college and I'm finding myself in this position of defining all these GUI screens for this radio that, uh, that we're replacing, this old military radio. And I'm working with the crews on B2 and B52. And one of the flight crew members starts to recount their process for boarding the plane. Because, you know, when they go B52, for example, they could be up there for <laughs> like 36 hours, I think, in some cases, and, and very, very long time. And she was saying that they would uh, haul these toilet seats, covers, like a padded soft cover with them. This many people want pizza. Good lord. This person never had an ability to draw color in the lines right here, this car. You know a cart? Okay, here, here's one. Take it away, Ben. And the reason was, is that they hated sitting on the toilet seat in the B-52s because they were like cold metal, because it's cold. The uh, operation altitude is 50,000 feet, which is way up there, if you think. 32,000 feet, 33,000 feet is what most airliners operate at. 50,000 feet is considerably higher. So you're flying at altitude, um, you're up there for a long time, can't even stand up in this plane. Uh, aside from the vertical stairwell, you can that's where you stretch your back out on the B-52. So they use these pads to like keep the seat not too cold, um, you know, whatever, when they have to use the restroom, even though they try not to use the restroom. That's kind of cool. I guess what she was saying is that throughout time they had attempted in using seat covers like they, they would attempt to put a seat on these toilets but the problem was is that it uh, these planes they go from you know ground level to 50,000 feet to ground level to 50,000 feet to ground level to 50,000 feet and they drop temperature temperature changes constantly that the material of the seat would either have to be metal which would be cold or plastic, which wouldn't be able to hand, handle the temperature changes in flight. So they opted to use these plastic foam seat cushions and everybody would bring their own seat cushion and they'd have to have five seat cushions because it's a crew of five. It was just a monumental waste of space. Because again, there's not a lot of crew capacity in, in these planes. They, they don't have a lot of room. They have room for bombs, that's their job. So they, uh, a question came up, how could we improve things, you know, for the crew? And somebody said, make a toilet seat that works. Men get electrocuted when they go in the ladies section. Remember that, Ben. Your dad told you. So I don't remember the exact, the, the, the contractor that was brought in 
but they were brought in and they figured out through a series of studies which plastic would be able to go from ground level to 50,000 feet and handle the temperature changes without cracking or becoming brittle or splintering or doing whatever. And to amateurize the cost of that engineering, it was $645 a seat. So everywhere that seat made of that material based off of that engineering was applied was $645. How was your day? Huh? You want some toys? Yeah, I want toys. Well, we're gonna walk over to the toys area in a little bit. We just gotta wait for mom to finish. Well, politics got a hold of that. Politicians got a hold of that, like Al Gore brought it up sometime in the mid-2000s. But, you know, we're talking about the 90s here when this whole thing went down. Actually, was it the 80s? It might even be the 80s. It was that long ago. But they used that as an example of government waste. And truly, the government does waste things, but you have to understand the complexities of engineering. It's like a world of baby carriers. It's like an off-road baby carrier. This one's waterproof. This one's waterproof. Leia, you know, waterproof thing. You go swimming with your baby. Go in the pool with your baby. Take a shower with your baby. So we're going through Target. Good old best foods, right, guys? Right? Right? But then we looked up and we saw best foods carefully crafted dressing and sandwich spread. That's code for Miracle Whip. Engineers get paid at a loan rate level basically a very high number but it's when you when you average it over time and you take the, all the things that engineers do the cost it, it makes sense because they have to perform these studies and they have to figure out the solution to problems that have no answer in the case a toilet seat that you can operate at 50,000 feet in ground level and not crack and splinter and all that so we look at the $645 toilet seat as an example of monumental government waste. And well, I'll be the first one to tell you that the government is inefficient. The $645 toilet seat is not one of them. I find it ironic that it is the thing that's brought up so often and is possibly a very good example of engineering done right. So anyway, that is like my first story time in a vlog. Hope you liked it. All right, guys, we'll talk to you tomorrow. See ya.